On this episode of How to Make Dinner, I'm making a super hearty, creamy, and really delicious sausage and potato soup. I thought I'd round out the fall season with a extra comforting recipe. So this is a super delicious, ultra creamy, ultra flavorful sausage and potato soup. And I know that there's quite a few vegans that have joined the channel lately and people who are wanting to eat less meat. And because I make a lot of meat free recipes, I think that this is a great place for you. <laughs> but I also wanted to show that when I do make recipes that include meat, it's really, really easy to swap it for vegan substitutes. I actually am almost of the mind now that vegan recipes don't need to be separate from regular recipes. I mean, a lot of the recipes that I make are inherently vegan, and if they're not, then they can easily be swapped out. We've got vegan meat, we've got vegan cream cheese, we've got vegan fish nowadays. Everything that you can imagine has a vegan substitute. Just to prove it, I'm gonna make this creamy sausage and potato soup completely vegan. To kick things off, I've got a whole bunch of veggies here. I have onions, garlic, celery, carrots, and potatoes, of course. I am using a regular pot for this soup, not a instant pot this time. You know, it's Sunday today and something about the weekend just makes me want to, you know, simmer an actual pot and have something kind of bubbling away that I can stir from time to time. And I just find the whole experience to be really cozy. I love the instant pot when I'm cooking things that take a long time, like big cuts of meat, which I don't do very often or like dried beans, or when I just want to make a soup super quickly and not pay any attention to it. Those are great moments for the Instant Pot, but this is just, this is just a normal pot moment for me. I'm gonna preheat my pan to about medium heat, and I'm just gonna chop the onions fairly small. And instead of oil in the pot, I'm going to use some vegetable spread in a creamy soup like this. I really like it when it's super buttery and I feel like butter or vegan spread vegetable spread just kind of starts things off in a really luxurious way, if that makes any sense. So I've got, you know, a tablespoon or so in there and I'm going to fire the onions in. And while the onions start to soften, I'm gonna chop up the celery. And normally when I make soup, I tend to chop things on the small side, but, but for this soup, I actually wanna cut things pretty chunky because it just kind of gives it like a home style kind of feel. So I'm just gonna make like, you know, the classic little celery slices here. And right away into the onions and celery, I'm going to throw in some salt, about a teaspoon. And that'll help soften the onions and celery and kind of just start pulling the juices out. Now would be a great time to take a sip of my Caesar. This is Canada's answer to the Bloody Mary and I'm a huge fan. I do have a Caesar video way back in the early videos. <laughs> um, maybe I'll link to it, but I was out at a concert last night and so I need a Caesar. Caesars are so much better than Bloody Marys. If you haven't had one before, go get your hands on some Clamato and whip one up, especially on a hungover Sunday, it's the best. All right, next is the garlic. And I have one humongoid clove here. I'm so lucky I've been getting my garlic from local garlic farmers for the past few years and it's just night and day to get good local garlic. This is like basically the size of an onion. I'm just going to mince this somewhat. Good enough. Next is the carrots. 
These are some pretty funny looking carrots, but hey, they taste good, so. <laughs> and just like the celery, I'm gonna do a super chunky circle cut here. There's something so comforting about getting a whole carrot coin on your spoon, isn't there? Sometimes when I'm cooking veggies for soup like this, I like to put a lid on to kind of help the sweat process. And it means that I don't have to look as closely to it because the moisture is kind of circulating and preventing the whole thing from burning. So I like that. Before I add the potatoes, I'm gonna add a few tomatoes and these are uh, plum tomatoes. There's three of them, but they're from a can. You can definitely use fresh if that's what you have. I just had cans, so I just yanked them out of there and I'm gonna give them a little chop. In the winter, you know me and tomatoes, I don't really buy fresh tomatoes very often. They're just not very good and then I'm just disappointed. So I tend to stick to canned tomatoes in the off season. Potatoes are next and I have yellow kind of waxy-ish potatoes. I guess they're similar to a Yukon gold. I don't know, they're just called yellow. I do like a waxy potato in this instance because they tend to keep their shape a little bit better than a russet, which is just super starchy and tends to fall apart when it's cooked for a long time. They're really good for mashing. These are really good for keeping their shape. So I'm gonna peel them. I know I'm not always one to peel a potato, but today I am. Just kind of, I don't know. I just don't want skins in the soup, you know? Sometimes when I try and think about my reasoning for things, I come up empty. <laughs> it's just, the answer is just because I feel like it, you know? So I encourage you to be the same way in, in cooking, just do what feels right. You're the one who has to eat it probably, right? And then the potatoes, I'm going quite chunky as well. Before I go any further, I totally missed a step and it's a pretty important one. And that is to cook the sausage. So normally what I do is I cook the sausage in the pot and then remove it before I cook the veggies in there but I forgot to do that. So I'm gonna do it in a separate cast iron pan, which is no big deal. And really it's just about getting the sausage browned. So I have field roast sausage here. This is Italian garlic and fennel. I chose this brand because I think it's pretty much available everywhere. And so I figured you would probably have access to it as well. And I have a whole package of four here and I'm just gonna crumble it into this cast iron pan and get a little bit of browning on it. I love a crumbled sausage. I think I'd almost take crumbled over sliced any day of the week. If you're using regular sausage here, you would probably want to drain some of the fat out after you cook it. Depending on how fatty your sausage is, you may or may not need to add a bit of additional fat. I'm going to, because these seem pretty lean. Once your sausage has gotten nice and kind of brown and you've got some crispy bits going on, you can just deglaze the pan with a little bit of just water will do. Pick up all those bits and then transfer that sausage into something while you cook all the veggies. But because my veggies are already cooked, I'm just gonna dump it right in. And then I'm gonna add my potatoes. My potatoes. I always think it's so funny when people say my. I guess they are mine, I did buy them. <laughs> and at this stage, I'm also gonna add some fresh thyme. And I actually really just like to pick the thyme leaves off of the stem. You know when people tell you to just drop the leaves in and just fish out the stems after? I find you don't get as much flavor that way. So I'm actually gonna just include the leaves themselves. So this is like what, I don't know, five or six sprigs. 
I love fresh thyme. This is one of my favorite, favorite herbs. I barely ever use it just because I don't have any right now growing in my garden, so, but I do love it. So I'm just gonna give that a tiny, tiny chop. Nothing too crazy. And then throw that in to the pot. And then I'm gonna add some stock. Obviously you'll use veggie stock if you're making this veg. <coughs> Mushroom stock would also be good. Depending on how much stock you have, I didn't have quite enough, so I'm just gonna top it up with water. And the liquid should come up just kind of above the veggies, so all the veggies should be pretty much submerged. I'm gonna bring this up to a rapid boil and then reduce it back down again and let it simmer until the potatoes are cooked, which should probably take about 10 minutes. In the meantime, I'm gonna chop some parsley for finishing it off. The soup has been cooking for about 10 minutes and to find out if it was done, all I did was take a potato chunk and kind of smush it against the side of the pot. And I could see that it smushed pretty easily. So I'm gonna call that done. I'm gonna turn off the heat and then I'm just gonna add a few finishing touches. So for the creamy part, I would normally use sour cream or heavy cream. Today I'm using oat cream and this is specifically for cooking. It says for cooking right on it. If it doesn't say that it's for cooking, it's probably gonna curdle when you put it into your hot liquid. So I don't know if you've ever tried putting soy milk in coffee, it pretty much never works. <laughs> you just get like coffee and gross bits of soy chunks. That sounds <laughs> terrible, but it's true. And I have a zero tolerance policy for any kind of curdling. It's just not, not something I'm interested in. So this one is for cooking. I've never tried it before, so I'm really hoping that it's going to live up to its label. I'm gonna use uh, about uh, two thirds of a cup. And I'm just gonna pour that in. I should really be doing a test first with a small amount of soup to make sure it doesn't separate, but just, just, just gonna go for it. Okay, so far so good. Yeah, looks pretty good. You could use uh, vegan sour cream or even cream cheese or a cream cheese like spread. Or of course, if you're doing the dairy thing, you can just use full fat sour cream or whipping cream, heavy cream, just a really fatty cream. When dairy products don't have enough fat in them, that's when you get separation. If you tried to use like 2% milk in a soup before and it separates, that's why. Especially if it's in an acidic kind of soup, like a tomato soup, it's just, it's just a lost cause, don't do it. Okay, and then the last touches are some pepper. I have a full teaspoon of ground pepper and I add it at the end just cause I kind of prefer pepper as a finisher, you know? And then my parsley, which I chopped earlier. This looks so good. And if you prefer it brothier, you can add more liquid. If you prefer it creamier, you can add more cream. I'm pretty happy with it just like this. The other thing you can do if you want a bit more of a creamy texture is to just kind of smush some potatoes against the side of the pot to kind of break them up and that'll kind of create a little bit of body in the soup, which is kind of nice. But this looks pretty darn good to me. So I'm gonna put it in a bowl and I'm gonna eat it. I just got this beautiful new bowl from the market today. Pretty excited about it. Nothing like a good bowl, you know, a really nice big one, preferably. So I think just to finish this off, I'm just gonna add a little bit more of this oat cream, totally optional. Little spoonful of sour cream would also be nice. And mm. 
It is so comforting. Oh. Mm, this is the perfect Sunday evening fall dinner. I'm so excited. I'm excited that it's a big pot. It's probably gonna last me a few days. It's gonna be even better tomorrow. Fridge cooking for the win. That's it for this ultra hearty sausage and potato soup. I hope you go and make it. You can make it vegan, you can make it meaty, whatever you choose. The full recipe will be down below in the description. And I look forward to seeing you in a couple weeks. It's gonna be winter. Mm -hmm.